The course of the Russian-Ukrainian war has changed when we report on the developments in the war. We often see that the Russian army is now on the defensive. The Ukrainian army not only expelled most of the Russian troops from the occupied territories, but also took it upon itself to destroy the regions of the occupiers on the territory of Russia. Just the other day, a massive fire broke out in Moscow hours before a successful drone strike by the Ukrainian army destroyed the observation tower of the Russian occupiers in Bryansk. Well, this chaos was unfolding on Russian soil. The mayor of the occupied city of Melitopol, Ivan Fedorov, announced that two Russian military bases in Melitopol all were blown up and hundreds of Russian occupiers were killed. The war is shifting towards Russia while the invaders on Ukrainian territory are being repelled. Let's analyze these developments in detail together before proceeding with the analysis. As the Daily News team, we remind you that we continue our work with our impartial and accurate journalism approach, and we ask you to click on the Super Thanks button, and we look forward to your support for these works. Russia's capital, Moscow, is in flames. A huge fire broke out last night in Vidnoy, Moscow. The fire broke out at the coke gas plant and brought violent explosions. The city of Moscow with the effect of these explosions and fire almost lit the morning in the night hours because the intensity of the fire was so great that it illuminated the whole city. The explosions and fire in the gas factory affected a huge area, so much so that the fire spread over an area of 200 meters squared. Moscow has experienced almost hell during the night hours. The intensity of the explosions and the fire was unimaginable. Although the fire spread over a huge area, the flames were more than 20 meters high. After the high flames, black smoke filled the city skies. Russia was devastated by this fire. The cause of the fire has not yet been determined. According to the Russian media, there were no casualties in the fire. However, the fire caused great material damage to Russia. Russian state television announced the news as follows. Explosion at a coke gas workshop in Vidnoy, a pump tower with benzyl is on fire, a flame 20 meters high. Hours after this development in the Russian capital, Moscow, the Russian occupiers. Observation tower in Bryansk was blown up. The Ukrainian army launched one attack after another on the occupation elements on Russian territory. The attack in Bryansk was carried out by the Kraken Regiment, one of the special forces of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. The Kraken Regiment was formed on the day Putin launched the invasion of Ukraine. The Kraken Regiment was formed by veterans of the Azov Special Operation Unit, which was formed after the unjust annexation of Crimea by the Russian occupiers in 2014. The regiment, made up of volunteer Ukrainians and experienced soldiers, has carried out many successful operations since the beginning of the war. The Kraken Regiment, which is not officially part of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, is a special military force operating under the umbrella of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. The Kraken Regiment blew up an important observation tower of the Russian occupiers the other day. The regiment's drones crossed the Ukrainian skies and reached Russia. The Grenadier Autonomous Observation Tower in Bryansk, Russia was hit by Kamikaze drones. The Kraken Regiment wrote on its telegram account about the attack. The intelligence forces of the Kraken Special Unit destroyed the Grenadier Autonomous Observation Tower in Bryansk Oblast using a Kamikaze drone. This observation tower was very important for the Russian army because Bryansk Oblast is a region bordering Belarus. The Russian army was going to follow the possible movements in Belarus with these observation towers, but the successful operation of the Kraken Regiment blinded the Russian invaders. This loss means that the Russian army will be unaware of many developments. The Ukrainian army, on the other hand, continues to cross the occupied territories and target military points in Russia. The destruction of the Grenadier Autonomous Observation Tower took place a few days after Ukrainian sabotage groups captured two villages in Bryansk. The Ukrainian army has increased its advances inside Russian territory because the Russian army is getting closer to exhaustion every day, having been pushed out of almost all of the occupied territories in Ukraine. 
the Russian army can only exist as a minority in a few of these territories. Melitopol is one such city where Russian occupiers are a minority on Ukrainian territory. Ukrainian troops launched a major attack on Melitopol the other day. The attack targeted the military bases of the Russian occupiers. Hundreds of Russian soldiers were killed as a result of the attack. Ukrainian army has not yet commented on how the attack was carried out. However, the mayor of Melitopol, Ivan Fedorov, gave some details about what happened after the attack. Fedorov said powerful explosions were heard in occupied Melitopol. Two enemy bases were destroyed. Russian casualties numbered in the hundreds, but the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine will provide more detailed information. Today has been a hellish week for them, just like it was a hell last week. March started quite badly for the Russians. It seems difficult for the Russian army which lost its military bases, watch towers and hundreds of soldiers in March to continue the war because the army lost hundreds of thousands of tons of ammunition and a lot of equipment with these attacks. Ukrainian army is targeting important points in its attacks in the occupied territories and in Russia. Ammunition depots, military bases, Watch towers and military airfields are among the most important points because the destruction of these points causes serious losses to the Russian army in terms of both military personnel and ammunition. In the face of the Ukrainian army's attacks on important points and strategic areas, the Russian army does not know what to do. The depleted Russian army, with its limited number of soldiers, is trying to carry out attacks in small groups of 5 or 10. Even these puny attacks of the Russian army show that Putin is getting closer to the end every day. Almost all of the small-scale attacks of the Russian invaders are successfully repelled by the Ukrainian army. But the Ukrainian army is not satisfied with this because, according to the Ukrainian leader Zelensky, the end of the war will only be possible if Crimea is taken from the Russian occupiers. Zelensky and his army have been stating at every point in opportunity that the Russian occupation began not on February 24, 2022, but in 2014, when Crimea was annexed. That is why the Ukrainian army is destroying the targets of the Russian occupiers in the Crimean region one by one. Last week, Russian authorities announced that about six Ukrainian drones were shot down in the Crimean peninsula. This was a success for the depleted Russian military. This situation, which was in the Russian army expressed as a success, was actually a development that would accelerate the depletion of its army. Because hour after these drones were shot down, the Ukrainian army launched successful attacks on important areas in the Crimean Peninsula. These areas had been detected instantaneously thanks to the downed drones. The Russian army did not even realize the strategy of the Ukrainian army. It is clearly seen that the war is progressing negatively for Russia. The Ukrainian army, on the other hand, is getting stronger every day and launching successful attacks. So how do you interpret the developments in the war? How will the Russian army prevent its setbacks? What are your thoughts on the spillover of the war to Russia? How do you assess the Ukrainian army's offensives? The Russians launched around half a hundred Iranian kamikaze drones. According to the Ukrainian general staff, 45 drones were shot down, 13 of them before midnight and 32 of them after midnight. The photos of the remnants of these drones show that the Russians have written New Year wishes on them. The Ukrainians have prepared to protect their cities during New Year's night because they created so-called civil defense squads, which are basically mobile anti-drone groups that operate just outside the cities. The fact that they are using off-road cars helps them to coordinate and quickly concentrate on a particular direction. One car uses a powerful flashlight to trace the drone, while others can reliably aim off to shoot the drones that are hundreds of meters away. As I told you yesterday, the Russians have concentrated their efforts on protecting the air over Moscow and created around three circles of air defense systems, with a total of 2,000 people monitoring the sky during the new year. I also told you that the Russians have likely compromised their air defense in other regions around Ukraine, 
which means that the Ukrainians might exploit this opportunity. And this is exactly what the Ukrainians did today at night. The Ukrainians struck a huge Russian military base in the Donetsk region. The base was located in Makivka, and according to some sources, there were around 600 troops, including three high-ranked commanders. The building was reportedly struck by HIMARS. All rockets hit the building simultaneously and completely demolished it. It was reported that the building had a lot of ammunition in the basement, which detonated and amplified the destruction. Locals reported that the Russians had to use a lot of trucks just to collect the dead bodies, and the trucks were so overloaded with dead bodies that some of them fell on the road from the trucks, which was captured on camera by the cars that were using the road after the trucks departed. Overall, it is estimated that 500 soldiers were killed and the rest is heavily wounded. And even if they survive, they will not return to the front. The Ukrainians have also taken the chance to target military objects in the neighboring Russian regions, in particular Kursk, Belgorod, Voronezh, and Rostov. The videos filmed by the residents of the big Russian cities only captured the sound of the air defense system. No destruction of civilian infrastructure has been recorded, so the targets must be military objects. Some sources indicate that the explosions were heard near the airfields, which the Russians indeed use quite often in this region. Despite the fact that the Russians tried to protect Moscow and St. Petersburg, some sources indicate that it was still, quote, loud out there. I found no reports of explosions, but it was said that the air threat sirens indeed went official. While the Russians have been targeting the Ukrainian capital with the drones with symbolic New Year wishes, the Ukrainians have struck Russian military objects. The destruction of the military base in Makivka is one of the most successful missile strikes during this war. But this might not be the end of it because just like with a missile strike in Zaporizhia, some soldiers may start deserting here as well in fear of being the next target. And given that the Donetsk front is one of the hottest, Russia is suffering one of the most stunning defeats in history against the legendary defense of the Ukrainian army. The mass surrender of Putin's soldiers is changing the fate of the war. But what is the reason for the surrender of Russian soldiers to Ukrainian soldiers who are believed to be weaker than them despite being outnumbered? The number one reason is, of course, the exemplary defense of the Ukrainian army in many areas. With a historic resistance, the Ukrainian army managed to foil all of Russia's plans. But can the success of an army force its enemies to surrender? This question is very important. Let us go to the battlefield to answer it. Russia currently occupies three regions in Ukraine, Luhansk, Donetsk and Zaporizhia. Castle, the largest regional capital occupied by Russia, was liberated by the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian army managed to push Russia to the eastern side of the Dnipro River. Of course, this was not easy. The Ukrainian army managed to gain the upper hand in this war by making very important strategic moves. In total, more than 90,000 Russian soldiers have been killed so far. The first reason that pushed the Russian soldiers to surrender was this feeling of great defeat. Russian soldiers are now fully convinced that they cannot win this war against Ukraine. The Ukrainian army has managed to gain the psychological upper hand. So many soldiers have died in the Russian army that all the soldiers who are fighting now think that they will be killed if there was a conflict. That's why they are trying to escape from the army or surrender immediately. On many fronts, Russian soldiers immediately started waving white flags when they saw the Ukrainian army. Russian soldiers surrendered by raising their hands without any conflict. The Ukrainian army is constantly sharing these images. Ukrainian drones record all the movements of the Russian army. The surrender images of Russian soldiers are also recorded by Ukrainian drones. When these images are shared on social media accounts, they attract great attention. The biggest interest is shown by other Russian soldiers. Russian soldiers share these images with each other and say that they should surrender. In addition, the Ukrainian army shows a very positive approach towards the surrender to Russian soldiers. 
Russian soldiers who surrendered to the Ukrainian army say that they were treated very well in the videos they shot and called on other Russian soldiers to surrender. In the most popular of these videos, the Russian soldier said, Here they give us hot food, winter clothes and a comfortable bed. None of this is in the Russian army. Zelensky took a very important step in this regard and made a call to Russian soldiers to surrender. It is claimed that thousands of soldiers surrendered after the speech of the Ukrainian leader who addressed Russian soldiers on television. This critical move of Zelensky is considered as one of the events that changed the course of the war. Here is what Zelensky said in this program. We have been listening to your conversations among yourselves. We know what you think about the senseless war, the shame, and your state on behalf of the Ukrainian people. We offer you a choice. If you surrender to our forces, we will treat you the way people deserve to be treated, the way you are not treated in the army, the way your army does not treat our army. The choice is yours. There are other reasons why Russian soldiers are so eager to surrender. For this, we need to know the structure of the Russian army. The Russian armed forces have 1,014,000 active and 2 million reserve personnel. It is also the second largest power in the world in terms of the number of soldiers. In addition to mercenaries in the Russian army, there are soldiers from many different ethnic elements. The Russian Federation has 22 republics. Minority people living in these regions are also recruited in the army. However, racism is quite high in Russia. Soldiers recruited from minority regions are treated very badly. Russian commanders do not care about the death of minority soldiers. This situation increases tensions in the Russian army. Soldiers who are mistreated by their commanders are much more willing to surrender because these assimilated people do not want to fight for Russia. At this point, it is necessary to open a very important topic in Russia. It is not believed that this war contributes to the interests of the country. The majority of Russian citizens do not support this war. Anti-war protests are increasing day by day. This is Putin's war, not ours, say the Russian rebels. This slogan is also affecting the soldiers in the Russian army. Russian soldiers do not want to die for Putin because the number of those who think that this war is is being fought only for Putin's political career is quite high. The other big problem in the Russian army is mercenaries. The Russian army cooperates with the Wagner Group for the organization of mercenaries. This mercenary company run by Prigozhin is identified with many war crimes. It is claimed that the Biden government will recognize the Wagner Group as a terrorist organization due to the pressure of Prigozhin, the president of Wagner on the Russian government. Mercenaries have many privileges. There is a great tension between mercenaries and Russian citizens who are compulsory service. Being in the military, this situation completely disrupts the hierarchical structure in the Russian army. In fact, the hierarchical structure in the Russian army has long been breaking down. Ukrainian troops have killed many generals in Russia. Also, generals who did not want to be part of this war resigned to replace these generals. Many Ukrainian soldiers were promoted. Therefore, the Russian army was led by very inexperienced commanders. This situation led to constant chaos in the Russian army. Due to this chaos, Many wrong decisions were made in the Russian army and a serious vacuum of authority was created. This led to the surrender of more Russian soldiers. The surrender of Russian soldiers has another great advantage for Ukraine. Russia is forced to take back its surrendered soldiers. That's why they need a prisoner exchange. If the Russian army captures Ukrainian soldiers, the Ukrainian government saves its soldiers by making a prisoner exchange. Thus, the surrendered Russian soldiers ensure the liberation of Ukrainian soldiers. Thanks to the great superiority of the Ukrainian army in this war, Russian soldiers continue to surrender day by day. The Russian army does not have enough soldiers left to fight Ukraine. 